very good, very good. Okay, so sometimes what happens is I I start to, uh, well, the, it starts streaming live and you can't actually see that you're streaming live. So I'm going to say uh, now already, because it's already happening, I'm sure, although I can't see it. I'm Jenny Lyon and I'm the founder of um, the Essential Live Show. And the reason for starting this show in the first place was to really bring more a higher consciousness and light uh, into, well, to, into the living room of people's homes, really and uh, share some really you know wisdom and share some teachers of light and their experiences and how they have helped other people and what they have to offer into the world so that you can get more enlightened that's the that's the whole idea of this show so i think we are live actually yes we are live excellent excellent uh, i might actually invite some people <clears throat> as well that would be really nice so thank you Celine for joining us oh, it's um, a pleasure for me to be here thank yeah very good thank you so we're gonna yeah I'm gonna start with a few questions so I'm Jenny Lyon and I'm a mentor a healer this has been my work for the last 20 years I started a show last year because what I've just said uh, I love speaking to other enlightened people and uh, want to bring more wisdom and knowledge um, to the viewers so, Celine, um, tell me your full name, how you would pronounce it, so I don't say it wrong. <laughs> Selene, the, the correct pronunciation is Selene, is a Greek name and means moon. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your, the second is, uh, second name? Caloni. Selene Caloni Williams. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. So, can you um, tell us? Uh, I know a little bit about you because I've done a bit of research, but could you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Um, kind of what you stand for and, and, and what, why you do the work you, you do and how you actually got there. So, oh, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can take a few minutes on that one because it's probably quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. When I was uh, 19, I, I went to Sri Lanka and uh, I met my first teacher, Michael Williams, uh, who despite uh, his name, his English name, he was um, a Tamil, a shamanism uh, and a yoga teacher. Um, he introduced me uh, to yoga and shamanism. And then uh, when I was in Sri Lanka, I also studied and practiced uh, Buddhist meditation for several years uh, uh, with uh, passion. <laughs> uh, when I came back uh, um, in Europe, uh, I studied psychology. And uh, after my degree, I moved to Switzerland, where I live uh, now. And um, I met James Hillman, uh, um, who was the father of the uh, archetypal psychology. And um, so I always say that um, um, I, I, I belong uh, to two worlds. Uh, Eastern and Western um, uh, world, because uh, uh, my I have studied in um, I have studied Buddhism, but I have also studied uh, um, Christianity. I have studied uh, yoga and shamanism, but I have studied also psychology, Eastern psychology. And so I consider myself to be abridged between two worlds. And um, so um, now in the last, uh, in the last 10 years, um, I, I, I found a lot of interest for uh, um, Siberian shamanism. Uh, and uh, this is why in the last 10 years, I traveled a lot in Russia, in Siberia, and also in Mongolia. And um, I wrote um, two books about uh, Siberian shamanism, uh, which um, have been published here in Europe, uh, in uh, Italian and in French. And uh, they had um, a lot of success here. Um, and um, so... <laughs> um, I my my only book published in US is uh, 
Themada Mantra, the um, shamanic yoga of non-duality. And uh, this uh, brings back uh, me to the, to the beginnings when I was in Sri Lanka and I studied uh, um, Buddhism and shamanism and yoga because ma the Mother Mantra is the core of a shamanic yoga path. And uh, it is uh, is something really amazing. Is a healing path. Is a spiritual path. Who don't pass through the thinking mind, but through through a simple vibration. You know, the repetition of a mantra is a vibration, and the continuous repetition of the mantra leads the uh, body to appropriate the mantra's uh, vibration. And uh, when this happens, the, um, the message that the mantra carries uh, um, is released. And uh, the mother mantra carries uh, the message of uh, freedom, of liberation, uh, which is actually our um, greatest wealth because uh, um, wealth, uh, and uh, realization, uh, uh, happiness, joy are um, uh, parts, are aspects of uh, freedom. When you reach a freedom, you can um, heal yourself in a deep way. When you reach freedom, you can uh, um, even have a a good relationship with uh, money, with job, with uh, your family, with your body, even with the um, uh, dreams uh, and uh, and uh, food and nourishment. Uh, I mean, uh, in the freedom, uh, all the uh, all kind of uh, objectives that we can find. Uh, are included and um, the mother mantra is a, a tool for freedom and um, I, I found this uh, not only in the shamanic yoga but also in the um, Siberian and uh, Turco-Mongolian shamanism and this is why I've fallen in love for <laughs> <laughs> for this kind of shamanism. Uh, all this uh, path, uh, yoga, shamanism, uh, um, Buddhist uh, meditation, uh, and also depth uh, psychology have something in common, uh, which is uh, uh, the possibility to um, uh, amplify to open uh, the state of consciousness uh, and reach, uh, um, reach something that I can call um, ecstasy. Mm -hmm. Ecstasy is, uh, is a non-dual state of consciousness. Ecstasy is um, a, a trance-like state, is a self-transcendent state. And um, through yoga, through shamanism, through meditation, through depth psychology, we are able to reach this, uh, um, this uh, state of consciousness in which we can uh, reach freedom and reaching freedom, we can reach all our objectives. Does it make sense? Yes, it, make, it all makes sense to me. So just for the viewers, because everyone is not maybe, um, you know, a car, uh, they don't understand everything about the shamanism and the yoga maybe, but um, maybe yoga people understand. But would you, uh, this is a question. So would you say that the practice of yoga and the teachings that comes with yoga, um, not just embodied practicement, but you know, the, the teachings that come with it and the shamanism, and the Buddhism that you've learned, is this your practice physically and your meditations and your um, application of 
with like your teachings is this how you use those different things to come into this higher state of consciousness so would you actually practice the yoga asanas together with other you know i don't know how does it look from a proper practical um point oh uh Shamanic yoga is a, is a special kind of yoga, mm -hmm. a very ancient one. Uh, it's also uh, called the uh, uh, yoga of non-duality. And um, in a shamanic yoga, we practice uh, uh, asanas and pranayamas, uh, uh, breath controls, exercises, um, um, but uh, uh, through um, flowing sequences and uh, flowing sequences are um, asana sequence done um, uh, uh, with um, uh, or accompanied with a particular kind of uh, um, breathing which creates the state of ecstasy so all the practices, um, asanas uh, and uh, meditations and uh, pranayamas, uh, mudras and so on, uh, all the yoga practices uh, we do are performed in a state of ecstasy, which is a non-dual state of consciousness. Um, um, and we, we reach this state through um, through the repetition uh, of a particular mantra, which involves uh, a special kind of breathing, and uh, through devotion, love, uh, active uh, imagination, active visualization. With these tools, we can reach uh, easily um, and amplify the state of consciousness um, which is called uh, ecstasy <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and um, yes because uh, we can say we can say that uh, we are doing a shamanic yoga only when we enter a state of ecstasy so um, this is uh, this is very <laughs> peculiar I mean and um, this uh, lead us leads us uh, to, to Buddhist meditation, because also in a Buddhist meditation is meant to lead us um, uh, to a state of uh, um, self-transcendence, um, which is quite similar to um, the ecstasy state. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I want to say. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes sense. It makes. I mean, um, totally the repetition, uh, especially of you know physical movement, breathing, and you know the way we apply visualizations, and if you like, rewire the neural path neural pathways because that's what we're doing, right? Um, it will then I can totally see how this in combination will take you to a higher state of consciousness, like the ecstasy state. Um, so would you say that the, is the mother mantra, does that, is what is described, or is mother mantra something more, or, or is this what you've just said to us, this is the mother mantra? Oh yes, I have to explain this. Yeah. <laughs> No, the, the, the Mada Mantra is the very core of shamanic yoga and mm -hmm. is a mix of uh, uh, healing exercises and uh, spiritual practices and also is a mantra. Yeah. <laughs> it's a particular, a very peculiar mantra um, and um, the repetition, the, the only the pure repetition of this mantra uh, leads to a particular amplified state of consciousness mm -hmm. uh, because um, it involves uh, um, breath control. And uh, through breath control and through the repetition of the mantra, we lead this uh, state of, um, this amplified state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And all the healing exercises and spiritual practices 
are done in this particular state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so with the mantra as well, do we actually with words repeat certain sentences as well as the breath work? Yes. Um, so there's specific uh, mantras that we repeat, you know, in this. So do you, is there many different ones or is there a particular one you no, use? No, the only one, <laughs> the only one yeah. that we use and mm -hmm. uh, is a, it is a very strong vibration and um, yes. Would it be at some point in this interview uh, be appropriate to share the other mantra or do you have to be in a specific state to receive this? Yes, no, I, I can't share the mother mantra uh, <laughs> through. <laughs> that's, like, that's what I was thinking. Maybe we need to be in a special, in a certain state to receive the uh, mother mantra. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I thought so. That's why I was thinking. Be initiated. Once, one should be initiated yeah. to, the, to the tradition before, uh, before receiving the mantra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would make sense because it's obviously the, the very refined energy uh tool you know to 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 create a higher state um okay brilliant so um when when did you realize that you wanted to to do the mother mantra i mean how did i know that you got led there by the different experiences and teachings and things that you've learned but when did you went ah oh, this is it the mother mantra that's what that's me when did you realize what happened? Being a psychologist, uh, I, I realized that uh, using uh, shamanic yoga techniques, uh, uh, practices, uh, and, uh, um, and uh, healing practices from, from the Mother Mantra traditions uh, uh, was uh, much more useful than <laughs> uh, using traditional traditional form of psychology and um, so I the results you mean with the patients or the clients were yeah. better yeah. yes with with my clients because uh, with myself I had already had this experience and I perfectly knew that with me it works um, better yeah. you and uh, Mother Mantra wor works better for me. But uh, I realized that was the same for my clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, since I realized that, uh, I started to, <laughs> um, to give myself uh, to this uh, um, <laughs> experience and to this path uh, completely. Mm -hmm. And um, now I only I only use for myself, and I only teach uh, um, this kind of practices: uh, mm -hmm. shamanic yoga and Mada mantra, um, exercising and uh, uh, healing practices. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Very yeah. good, thank you. Um, so, would you be? I mean, I'm sure the list is long on this, but what would be some really powerful healings that would have happened that you have experience with with the mother mantra yes one, one result so you've had uh because it's interesting because people might be listening and thinking how is this going to help me you know what, how can it help me from healing certain things yes what, what, one kind of powerful healing is um the mystical marriage what mm -hmm. a mystical marriage is mm -hmm. Uh, the mystical marriage is um, a ritual performed um, with the Mada Mantra and uh, in a state of ecstasy uh, through which you can join your uh, spiritual guide um, and, um, uh, and reach a deep union with, uh, with, with it. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you, if one can live uh, knowing the deep union with the guide spirit, 
thing, things such uh, or emotions such as uh, uh, fear, uh, insecurity, uh, mm -hmm. anger, uh, um, guilt, mm -hmm. um, guilty, um, little by little disappear completely mm -hmm. because uh, you uh, perceive that you are not alone in this world and uh, who is with you, the one who is with you <laughs> is really powerful. <laughs> and so you... So you, so you become more... Um, you, you're taking out... You're coming out of your personality in a way because you are looking at it from a different perspective because you're no longer thinking it's always oh, just me for me. It's like... Ah, I am, you know, connected on a higher state in high in a higher plane in this way, and therefore these things don't seem to be like hard or important anymore. They you let go. Is that how you can almost describe? Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all the shamans uh, in all the traditions of the world have uh, a celestial or an invisible or a mystical bride or, or bridegroom. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, this is the mystical marriage for mm -hmm. alchemists, alchemic weddings, mm -hmm. and um, is a really powerful ritual, um, which leads you um, to, <laughs> to a state of uh, freedom and joy and, uh, um, uh, and beauty. Um, I mean, uh, until you are not uh, joined with the invisible, you um, are in need, always in need of something visible. You are in need of hours, of others. You are in need of things, material things, uh, and. Um, <laughs> But when you, when you find uh, your uh, invisible lover, <laughs> when, you, when you can reach uh, uh, the non-duality state between visible and invisible, between human and divine, when you can join the, this state of a non-duality, so um, you are not more in need you see, people are in need con continuously uh, because this society um, gives us uh, the, 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 the perception, the false perception mm -hmm. of uh, need. Uh, people always need something mm -hmm. because they have to be in need. All the economy runs upon need. <laughs> And it feeds more of the fear and the guilt and the everything else. Right? Yes, yes, of yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this might be a strange question. So if you are married <laughs> in human life, can you still have your marriage with your mystical, uh, you know, guide? Your, you know, can you still do this? Because you are, it's like, you know, from an energy point of view, it must be very beneficial. Oh, yes, yes, because... Uh, I'm, I'm just asking because I'm married. So I'm <laughs> yes, me too. I'm married. I, have, yes, uh, I thought so, but I better say this because in case people think... <laughs> because I think it sounds wonderful. I think we have this person, this divine being, and I, I am sure I... Um, I was even told I had somebody. He looks almost a little bit like me, but this was years ago, so I don't know if they changed. But uh, I had this um, shaman who drew this mystical spirit or mystical partner or, you know, like this for me. And I, yes, I was very attracted to this picture. <laughs> so maybe that was what, what it was. Um, would you say so, maybe? 
Yes, yes. Well, uh, the, the mystical marriage, uh, having a mystical and invisible partner, uh, yeah. is, the, if, is the best way to find also your soulmate in this world, in the material world. Yes, because uh, uh, once you have uh, settled your uh, uh, true union mm -hmm. with, uh, with the divine, uh, mm -hmm. with a guide the spirit which is actually the representative of the divine when you have reached this union then it's much more easier to ah. find also a, a terrestrial <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. so this might be good advice for those people because some people really want a soulmate or twin flame relationships um and yeah so that can be very useful then for their spirit. So it might be even better or more easy for them to find somebody on their own vibration in this earthly life that will match the frequency, right? Of course, because our relation, our relationships in this world are the, ref are the reflection of relationship that we have in, a, yeah. in the mystical world. And yeah. so... Uh, you, you yeah, have oh, wonderful. I feel all excited about this. I need to ask you more about how to do this. <laughs> is this a part of your teaching, or do you have to do a course, or what, what is it that so that you can have this? Yes, it's a part of my retreats. I, I do, I give retreats in which I perform rituals, um, and during these rituals, I um, invite people to um, uh, to travel in the invisible world and find their uh, um, invisible lover uh, and uh, do the marriage. And then after that, everyone have a more easy life <laughs> because mm -hmm. more easier is uh, is easier. A easier life is easier for anyone to find a perfect soulmate in the terrestrial uh, awesome. dimension, yeah, and yeah. Uh, also this um, affects this affects also uh, the job and uh, the relationship with uh, um, wealth and money and um, it affects also um, <laughs> the relationship with uh, with your own body um, yeah. yes because um, you see um, everything is a reflection Everything is in this world, in the material world. Everything is a reflection of what happens in the mystical world. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a, a good relationship with your guide spirit, then everything is easier in the, in the normal, in the material world. For the ancient, for the Greeks, this was... A, called eudaimonia the word eudaimonia for uh, socrates and plato was uh, the real happiness and the word eudaimonia means literally to be accompanied by a good diamond which is a good guide spirit yes. you see Yes. So first of all, first of all, we have to reach our eudaimonia, mm -hmm. our uh, relationship with our good guide spirit. And yeah. then, then everything will be easier for us. Of course, because it's almost like, look, although I, I love the shaman, uh, shamanic side of the work, it is, I bring some shamanic. Uh, practices into the healing work that I do where we travel in the underworld and things like that but uh, so I, I love this uh, you know I love this yeah, place yeah. Um, but um, what I was going to say was that when uh, now I think I said my mind now yes no when we connect in this way especially the work that I do I am not always knowing who I'm I know who I'm listening to I'm listening to my guides but 
just generally when you feel connected and supported in this way life is like easy <laughs> because yeah. because so I might use slightly different t terminology than you're using but you know I always encourage all my clients to connect to their higher self listen to their guides you know connect in this way to um yeah listen and hear the wisdom because we can all connect this this level of consciousness so yeah, I, I, I really, I'm really, I'm loving this uh, conversation about the mystical marriage. <laughs> so, um, yeah, see if I have, I've got a few more questions. Um, so, did you have? Would you say uh, your spiritual awakening was like gradual, or was this when you were young, when you went this travel to the? Yes, uh, when it was, uh, when I was in Sri Lanka during a meditation mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. I reached my first uh, samadhi. Uh, wor the word samadhi means uh, union uh, with uh, everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, uh, so when I reached this uh, samadhi, I understood uh, uh, which is the purpose of life. <laughs> and I told to myself, yes, I want to live for that for this <laughs> this is my objective <laughs> okay. yes. <laughs> yes okay so it was more like an, a, a decision and you had a strong energy some energy connection that you felt or some state of consciousness yeah yeah okay because yeah. yeah, i always ask this because some people have very strong uh spiritual awakening some people have really hard ones you know but uh okay so this is lovely so thank you for sharing that um so I'm really curious, when you say shamanic yoga, do you, is it specific asanas? I'm very technical here. Is it specific asanas that you do with, uh, blended with the shamanism or is it a state of consciousness to shamanism when you bring it into the yoga? Just explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Yeah. <laughs> On my website, you can find some uh, flu uh, fl uh, flowing sequences, uh, oh, okay. some videos, some videos of flowing sequences. Mm -hmm. But just to explain, uh, to do a flowing sequence, you should enter a state which is called uh, imaginal forest. Mm -hmm. uh, the imaginal is uh, uh, the threshold between uh, conscious and unconscious, between uh, visible and invisible. Mm -hmm. It is where all the images come from. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, first of all, when we do a uh, flowing sequences, we have to ask the permission to mm -hmm. enter the imaginal forest, mm -hmm. which is this magical place. Mm -hmm. um, where all the images which become uh, events and thoughts and behaviors and uh, emotions come from. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, first of all, we enter the state of consciousness, the imaginal forest. And then we do um, asanas in uh, flowing sequences. Um, <laughs> And uh, these uh, asanas are uh, uh, very, very imitating, uh, very imitating um, animals' movement and also animals' uh, bre breath. And um, so we we really, I, it, it, um, we really connect with uh, our. Um, um, our uh, animal soul, our um, uh, wild soul mm -hmm. during the flowing sequences. Mm -hmm. And um, it's beautiful, it's amazing because a lot of energies uh, awaken and um, uh, we, we reach a, a very high level of inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, Sounds wonderful, I want to do it now. <laughs> Yes, it's really, really amazing. It's really beautiful. I can just feel, you know, it's just like the divine flow of just richness and, yeah, abundance. <laughs> it's very amazing. difficult to describe it. It's very difficult to describe it. One should uh, 
tried. <laughs> yeah. Well, by you just talking, I just know that this, it's like you're, you are going into a fifth dimensional state. Yes. Really. I mean, it's a higher consciousness state. So this state is, is full of flow and richness, uh, joy, happiness. It's like great. <laughs> I mean, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is where we want to go. So I think, I mean, my next question, I think is almost answering itself, but how do we attract more wealth, abundance and money with the mother mantra? Because this is my, one of my favorite topics because I love teaching uh, females how to attract more of this and let go of the hardship, you know? Um, so can you explain, go a bit deeper? Oh, yes. Mm. Through, through a state of ecstasy, because uh, when one reach, reaches the state of ecstasy, uh, all fears and uh, insecurity, um, uh, little by little, disappear. And uh, when you are free from fear and insecurity, of course you reach your objectives and most of all your objectives um, your your um, money objectives and um, you see your uh, um, guide spirit is the is the king of invisibility for ancient Greeks the king of the realm of invisibility was uh, Hades, Hades, okay? Mm -hmm. But Hades was also um, Plutus, and Plutus uh, means uh, the rich one. Uh, so, uh, you see, when you, when you realize uh, that um, uh, you are not uh, uh, you are not victim you are not a victim of events but events are uh, entities uh, god and goddesses uh, spirits uh, they are not mechanical um, <laughs> I mean, uh, they are not something mechanical or something due, uh, uh, something that happened because of the law of cause and effect, cause and effect. But events are en uh, entities, uh, spirits, God and goddesses. And so when you, um, when you reach the mystical marriage, you can also talk to the spirit, talk to the God and goddesses, and you can be the co-creator of your reality. Uh, you have not to be the victims of events. You can be the co-creator of events, but you should understand that events are not produced by the <laughs> mechanical or logical law of cause and effect mm -hmm. but they are entities spirits god and goddesses you see the karma law is not the mechanical law of cause and effect is the poetic law of uh, action and reaction but uh, people think and behave um, under the spell of uh, uh, mechanical, logical, rational law of cause and effect. Mm, absolutely. And, yeah, yes. Because uh, it's actually quite funny. I did a, a short Facebook Live inside my group today, and I was talking about how when things are happening to us, they're not happening to us. We've created that in a way because of the karma and the, you know, this, this is a reflection of what, what, what is in our path. And it's how we take responsibility over what's happening and how we react to it. So in other words, yes, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. But so 
when you say the events, I understand um, the the explanation around what you're saying with the, the spirits, the gods and the goddesses uh, as an explanation of the events. But would you not say, so that's, that they more like, they are energy beings, aren't they? That would be representing that. So from, from people that don't kind of, can't really comprehend that, would you say again, it's a creation of what's going on inside our inner empire and the, the, the energy reflection of what's going on within us? Would you say this? Yes, yes, I say that. And also I say that uh, everything depends uh, uh, on uh, our um, way of perceiving. You see, uh, if you see a scene, um, for instance, a, a sparrow hawk um, catching a, a mouse, mm -hmm. uh, you can see, wow, uh, look at that sparrow who, who catch the mouse. But um, uh, the ancients, Omiro, uh, Plato, uh, couldn't say that. Uh, they, they said uh, um, the, the night, the, the goddess, the night, Nyx in Greek, mm. came and she wanted that the sparrow and the and the mouse uh, joined together. What I want to say is that um, we are um, in our in, in the sense of I. We always uh, act and think and behave from our sense of I. Mm. But um, uh, but. In, in, in such a way, we lose uh, our companion. We always have an invisible companion who um, creates events with... Uh, we create events. When we create events, we are not alone. This is what I want to say. When you, yes, of course, we create events, but when we create events, we are not alone. We are never alone. Mm -hmm. There is always uh, someone which is invisible and uh, which creates events mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, together. Yes. It's not one. Exactly. It's not one linear. You know, it's like not, not one sort of injection of energy somewhere. It's yes. lots of. It's like a matrix, right? Everything. Yes. Yeah. The, the creation is always done um, uh, by two elements. One is visible and one is invisible. Always mm -hmm. two elements. Yeah. One we can call human, and the other we can call divine. But mm -hmm. uh, each creation, each event, each thought, each idea, each behavior is created by always by two elements. Mm -hmm. One is visible, and one is invisible. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we are the dreamer of the dream. We are the creators. Of the, of, the, of, of the events, but we are not alone. When we create, we are not alone. There is always someone with, it, with, with us. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to consider it. We see if, if we don't consider the presence of the invisible, then the, this can be this can lead us to be victim of events. Yes, yes. And there's another level of responsibility and another level of ownership that happens when we realize that there is the invisible part and then it's us. Yeah. The co-creation with the divine. Mm -hmm. Yes, co-creation. We have not to lose uh, the sense of co-creation mm -hmm. always. So I have another question. I'm not sure how you feel about this question, but 
how do you see the planetary shift? Because there is a really a raising uh, level of consciousness around the planet. It doesn't look like it because it's so much um, pain, but I call it the detox, you know, <laughs> of everything that needs to come out and, and heal. But um, what, how do you see um, the work that you do and the future of our children, etc.? What's your feeling around the future? Because it's a lot happening at the moment. Uh, I believe in post-humanism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I think that uh, we 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 will create uh, a new uh, species species uh, because uh, we have a present human being uh, um, <laughs> can't be the the objective of an evolution of nature uh, <laughs> um, so billions uh, of years of evolution could not reach uh, to this uh, uh, present uh, human being um, uh, who is uh, uh, so violent and so dis destructive uh, um, I think uh, uh, someone else is waiting for us uh, in the future and uh, I, I perceive that uh, um, several, um, several people nowadays are ready to do the shift, uh, um, are ready to create a new, um, a new human being. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in a new human being. Um, and this uh, new creature, in my opinion, is... Um, is a is a creature um, able to think with with his uh, mind and with his heart at the same time um, thinking with the mind and with the heart at the same time means create a new mind and a new mind creates a new human beings because uh, um, we are what we we think, and um, all the world is is in the eyes of the beholder. So, if the beholder changes um, the perspective, then we can change the world. So I think in a new human being uh, in the in a new world, and I think is not uh, is not far away. It's close by. It's close by. Well, the children that are coming in, my children are very uh, conscious. They will, you know, correct me. <laughs> and I'm pretty conscious, you know, I do my work. <laughs> but they still correct me. So I believe that the children coming in, um, you know, this is, I am also really passionate about this because as adults and as parents, even if you are a parent or not, um, we are responsible for the younger children for the younger people. So we need to step up yes. and show, this is how you do it. I'm really doing my best here and I'm going to show you my best way because you are going to take over. And I'm very passionate about this. So people, I always encourage everyone, you know, you need to step up. You need to take responsibility for your life. You know, you need to do these practices and you need to learn more about yourself. So uh, absolutely, because <laughs> that's going to bring us a better uh, generation to come. Yes. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to see if we have any questions, because sometimes they pop up in the, I don't think on the Zoom uh, so much. I'm going to look in Facebook, because uh, sometimes then people put the, let's see here. Let's just find the. Oh, oh Kirsty, lovely. Hello, ladies. So Kirsty is um, my very good friend who also is a yoga teacher and she practices uh, very deep spirit spirituality. Uh, hello, darling. Let's uh, see if there was any questions there. No, not yet. No questions yet. That's okay. So if you had one advice, like one sentence, if the whole world was listening now, 
what would you like to say? I mean, take your time. <laughs> what would you like to say to them? I try not to judge, but include, try to include other and experiences and uh, um, everything. Uh, not judge, but uh, uh, judge. include. Judge. Not judge, not yeah. judge, not judge, but include. Yes. Uh, not judge, but include. Uh, this is my advice. Try not to judge and try to include mm. uh, mm -hmm. what you face, everything you face. Uh, um, so like open yes you know, open heart open mind um because this is how we not judge and and be open to include things right yes yes open and uh, try to see everything as a as a reflection of yourself uh, i mean um this is the best way to include try to see others and things uh, as um, uh, your reflection. Mm. Uh, this is the best way to reach a non-dual state mm. uh, in which uh, you and uh, others are uh, distinct but not separated. Distinct but not separated. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, this is... Um, very, that's very good advice because advice, yes. oneness, but I like the distinct because we are all one, but need to understand the distinctness. This is the flavor yes. of each, you know, individual. Yeah. yeah. So um, could you just share, this is if people, uh, I think I put it in. I will put it in actually in the Facebook link. But could you share where people can find more about you? Oh yes, they can uh, find more about me uh, on my website, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, selenecallonywilliams.com, mm -hmm. and uh, on my Facebook page. I will be in the US in uh, October for the Sand uh, Conference in San Jose. There is a um, great huge conference, mm -hmm. the Sand Science and Non-Duality. I will be there, um, and then um, I'll be in Seattle, um, the, the the first and the second of, of November, for a seminar about um, archetypal psychology and shamanic yoga. And uh, so if you want to, to know more about me, of course, you can read my book, The Mother Mantra, The Ancient Shamanic Yoga of Non-Duality, which is published uh, in US by Inner Traditions. Um, you can uh, see flowing sequences, uh, videos on my website and try to do, try to do flowing sequences. I'm going to try those. I missed the videos. I was reading the you know, a little bit on each page and uh, understanding, you know, what your work is. But I missed the video, so I'm going to look for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, uh, if you want yeah. to meet me, I'm uh, in San Jose at the end of October for the Sand and in um, Seattle the, 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 yeah. first, the second of, uh, of November. Yes, so, so yes, yeah. so if people, I, I'm personally not going to be in America at that time, I'm in the UK, but... <clears throat> If I have many of my clients are in America, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But what I'm going to do in the Facebook um, copy, I'll put your email, sorry, uh, your website in there and your Facebook page <coughs> as well. Yes, so yes. You can have a, you know, have an easy yes. look. I think my book is available in the UK as well, published by Inner Tradition, yes. Mm -hmm. It should be if it normally, if it's an American, normally it's in, in yes, well. should be, yes, should be, yes. yes, yes. Well, thank you very much for uh, being on the show. And I found this uh, tremendously interesting and uplifting. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. Yeah, and best of luck when you go to America for a great conference. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and, you. Yeah, and thank you so much for, com for coming to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.